Don't do that larceny. Oh, little larceny 92 left. Gotta, gotta clean it. Mm hmm. What are you thinking we get into next, Dill? I'm very curious. We cracked our two new ones. Well, we got one more new one that we can crack. We do. I know you've tried the bullet before. I personally haven't. I've had some people around my workplaces telling me that bullet's a very good one, and we happened to find this one on sale. We did find this one on sale. What price did you remember picking that guy up at? I think 20... full price on the store was... 32 33 but sale price it was only 28 dollars and so I, i've had people telling me around that it's a really good find especially the orange label and so i saw it on the sale and i was like i need to scoop that i need to give it a try myself it hits that first qualifying mark for me distilled and aged in the same place yep although this is going to be a high rye i'm typically more of a weeded guy but that's all right mama didn't raise no quitter no quitters no quitters here louisville kentucky beautiful place I don't necessarily see an age statement on here. No, no age statement. So it's going to be some relatively unknown stuff for its age group. You want to go ahead and get that working? Yeah, let's do that. Let's crack into that. Let me see here. How they want us to do this one. I think they got a little peel there somewhere on the they side. Do. Yes, they do. Yeah. Boom. But of course, we'll cue you guys into some of these different hunts and things we're doing as we progress through this channel. Think about strapping some GoPros to our head and really bugging some local clerks, but hey. I think the GoPro method versus the chest strap method is really the way to be. What, just on stick or are you thinking no, on the head? No, just right here on the chest. You know what I mean? Though? We can have it right here, and I feel like that's maybe just a little less. <laughs> <laughs> The GoPro head route, you know what I mean? Well, I think that is going to be funny for all the different people to be like, what is are these guys doing? Looking around, talking bourbon all day, living their best life. Wow, I'm getting a wildly different notes than some of the stuff we've just sipped in the past. So really? I know we started with the we started with the the old granddad, which I don't know with, with the grain grain mash on that bill. I don't is. think he really even mentions it on the side of the bottle. I was trying no. to give it a read. I don't think it mentions. Maybe if we get better with this stuff, we can start taking a look at that ahead of time and have a little rundown list. Yes, we do know for a fact that that larceny is supposed to be a weeded whiskey, and we do know that this bullet one is a rock. But how's that smell? It was loud. Oh, but he's a different kind of very loud. different than especially that larceny. He's very bright. He is very loud. But none of that red fruit, not there at all. No, a lot of oak, a lot of woods. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of that American oak. And like I said, there's a balance between the smoky and the woody, and that can be kind of a funny thing. But I think this kind of strikes the balance between the two. Just a little tiny bit of citrus right there on the rear end of it, in my opinion. He almost kind of wants to hide from you, but I can do really... It's like somebody was eating oranges in the room next to the bottle. Yeah. You know I what I mean? I can agree with that. Now, maybe I'm saying oranges just off the label, but there there is just that, that pithy, rindy citrus note. You know what I mean? Just right there at the rear end, he just sneaks in on. It's definitely a lower proof. You can smell it. You can smell those more simple character notes. Know I think it's a 90. Proof. I'm going to take a stab in the dark. I'm going to say it's a 90. You are absolutely right. It is a 90 proof. So, right there. Well, a lot of the stuff we sit is in the 90 proof range. Yeah. I think um, that's great for beginners. I, I think 90 proof is a good place. I feel like if you're really fresh starting out, maybe an 86 would treat you kind of well. He's going to be really smooth and mellow for you. But I feel like the 90s provide just enough of the complex flavors where you can really start finding the really good stuff. And he really does come back with quite some spice. You know what I mean? He doesn't have that just bang pow of some of those high proof stuff we were just trying out. But he, uh... Oh, yeah. Like butter, it just goes down. And that I, I do does. get that spice. He comes back. Uh, that's definitely a lot of citrus on the flavor, I would say. Not very sweet at all, which I'm a big fan of. I don't really like too sweet. I like a little sweetness, but I would say he's on the better end of it. I definitely say he would be on, on the better end of the sliding scale. And, uh, 
he's still smooth though and that's that's some of the thing that in my bourbon journey i'm still kind of striking a balance between what is smooth and what is sweet now i've certainly progressed past that tennessee honey sugar water type sweetness to Tennessee honey, honestly, sometimes makes me sick. But... Yeah, just the thought of it now. But I'm sure there is some other drinks for some other people. I know there's a place for it. There's absolutely a place for it. I don't, on smell, he's very mellow. I don't know. I would probably put him around a four or a five. Not necessarily out of a bad smell, but just out of a lack of... Like, the average smell across the board is going to deliver some characteristics. Yeah. And, and at a 90 proof, I expect just a little bit more... I don't know if his nose quite lives up to his taste. So while I think I'm going to be at like a four on the nose, I think I'm going to be at a six on the overall taste. I think it's just slightly better than average on taste. But I think that the nose doesn't quite reveal what you're about to be into. I think the nose is too sweet, too sugary for the for the smoky spice experience you're about to have. I agree with that a lot. I will say for the price. Now, I will say it's a little unfair because according to the store, I got it on sale. So I got it at about $28. But then we go to a liquor store down the street... Mm -hmm. $3 cheaper. $3 cheaper. So for the price point, I might have to put it at an 8 or a 9. Because it doesn't. It seems like he's readily available. Yep. He's not very not expensive in at any way, pace, like, shape, or form. But flavor-wise, he's still up there. He's still pretty good. And I can see myself sipping this guy. I can see myself sipping this guy, but really what I do see myself doing with this bottle, I can see him being a mixer bottle. He kind of lies in that middle ground. I'm definitely right there with you. I think he's a little bit more in the mixer territory. And we actually have a little bit of history on this bottle. Um, it was a brand that was started in the, in the middle 2010s. Now, this is all kind of flying from the hip. But I do know that it was a, a front brand for the Stitzelweller Distillery. They ran this brand kind of on that name and the, that, that factory, that facility, the old one that shut down after they sold off to Sazerac. Oh, they brought that place back okay. and started running and heading bullet out of there. And then they ended up moving on to their blade and bow that we got back here and, and running that up. I love that blade and bow. That blade, that blade bow is very good. That may be what we get into next. We can start talking about some of the Stitzelweller distillery products. But Bullet Bourbon, I'm at a four on the nose. I'm at a six on the taste. And as far as the overall price, I'm right up there with you at the top. I think it's going to be an eight or nine dollar. I think it's something that's definitely be on your bar be it a mixer or be it something that you like to sip straight with more of a rye fan, I think it deserves a place on a bar, but I can't give it full neat territory. No, I, so. I, I just can't give it full neat territory, but for the price, it's very good. And I think that brings the overall score up. Overall, I would say probably a 7, maybe a 7.5, just because that price for it is very good and for what it does offer for you. Yeah. I'll let you take the point five. i I'll be at the 7 because I'm right there with you, but right. I think it's just it's a bit above average, but again, it's just nothing to be right home about like that. I found the best bottle. You've got to get in that. I don't, I don't think I'll be texting David about that one. We couldn't break into the Ancient Age Preferred. Nope. We I'm haven't had that review one. yet. <laughs> I'm going to do a hard pass on the Ancient Age Preferred. I think that's the one thing on this shelf here that I have not tried now. Because I tried just tried the 114 and the, the bullet. Yep. So I think... Actually, I don't think that's true. I don't think I've tried this McKenna here. I know that one's yours. Woo! I know we finished, but I didn't do my big sip one, though. So what we kind of do it? We do a snip. We do a small sip, and we do a big sip. And each one of these should impart just a little bit of difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? That small sip is going to be a lot more the flavor. a lot less the alcohol all the way around. On the big sip, and the nose is going to be nothing like that. It's going to be all alcohol. The nose is always taste. very different. I'm a very big fan yeah. of the nose sometimes. Especially when we have a chance to compare alternative years and the secondary snifter there. Oh, absolutely. Oh, how, how could you not? But I think we're talking about Blade and Bow up next. Absolutely. Here, let's do a real quick. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and see where we're at. All right, let's go ahead and take a pause real quick just to do a little.